Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at the theory of the model view controller design pattern and contrary to what I said previously we're still not going to do any coding in this tutorial but what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll talk about the theory of this here and then in the next tutorial we'll get on to looking at practice and we'll do some coding and we'll see an example of model view controller or at least we'll start on it. So the idea behind, let's, let's write this down, model, the idea behind model view controller is that you have a model which represents your data. Controller, there we go. So the model represents your data. It may actually contain data or uh, more likely it's just interfacing with a database or something or perhaps it represents a um, it, it holds some data in, in memory, in RAM, that it gets from a database. But the point is that the model is dealing directly with the data and it model that word. It's model as in data model, meaning it kind of models the data or represents the data. The view is your GUI, the graphical user interface or it's, it's some kind of system that usually will interact with a user. So you could think of the view, and the reason it's called view is it's kind of a view of the data. You're kind of, it's a view of the data model. You're looking at the data in a certain way. And you can, you should be able to, as we saw in the last video, we sh you should be able to test the model separately. And then you can use different views with that same data model if you want to. You might only create one, but you could use different views because there's going to be lots of different ways of representing the same set of data. So that's that's the view. Whoops, and that has to do with uh, um, interacting directly with the user. So the controller is kind of the least tangible um, bit of this setup. And what the controller is is it contains the logic of the application. Basically, and uh, it's um, it's you can think of it as just, as just as being stuff that isn't in the model and isn't in the view. So if you've got stuff in your application that isn't dealing directly with the data model and it's not dealing directly with the user, then it's going to be in the controller, and that stuff is going to be the logic of your application, uh, among other things. It's going to be the the stuff that does calculations or decides what should happen next. And that stuff is often called business logic. I'm not really sure why business, but I guess it's carrying on the business of your application. So it's the other stuff, it isn't data and isn't GUI, basically. Let's let's draw this out. So we've got the view here. This is the view. And that's the usually the graphical user interface or some kind of it could even be a command line thing, but it, it interacts with the user usually in some way. And of course, not, not every application will even have a view. And so this isn't model view controller, uh, which by the way, I should say is also known as MVC. MVC is not going to be suitable for every application, but it's suitable for a very wide range of applications. And even applications like Android programs, which you can't fit into a strict interpretation of model view controller or not easily. Often, if you keep model view controller in your mind, it will help you to structure the program. So even when you can't apply a model view controller, often you can apply some elements of it. So here we've got the view, which is interacting with the user. And down here, we've got the model, which is dealing with data. And then we've got the controller here, controller which contains the kind of logic it's kind of the brains of your application really now the view's job is to represent stuff that's in the model so the view is going to make requests for data from the model so this arrow is data and there are kind of two possibilities here certainly the view is 
it's almost certainly going to make requests to the data, to the model. It's going to say to the model, give me this bit of data or give me that bit of data. And it's going to represent that data somehow to the user. So it's going to make requests. It might also listen to the model. And we're going to look at what that means in more detail later on. And uh, if you look at the Wikipedia page, which explains this stuff pretty well, it breaks it down um, by saying that in uh, a passive interpretation of MVC, the view will make requests to the model. So the model is passive. It's not telling the, the view anything of its own volition, so to speak. But in an active interpretation, the view is listening to the model, which means that the model will notify the view. It will actually tell the view if the data has changed and uh, the view will update itself accordingly. And note that doesn't mean that the model will include view classes. That the model must never, never, the model is part of the back end, it must never include classes that are part of the view or for that matter, the controller. So you might wonder how can the model notify the view of things that are happening if it doesn't, if the model doesn't include any classes that are part of the view? And the answer to that is this listening thing. It's what we call the um, observer pattern, which is one of the patterns that we'll be, we'll be looking at in these tutorials. Now the the controller is is able to make commands to the model. It tells the model what to do. The view doesn't do that. It gets data from the model. It doesn't tell the model what to do. That's the job of the controller. The, the controller is the brains and all the view is doing is representing the data. But it's the controller that says, oh, the user has selected that they want to pay $100 into their bank account. Therefore, I will tell the model to update itself and to add those hundred dollars in there. The controller instructs the model what to do. And the controller may very well instruct the view what to do as well. I mean, you could kind of argue that any system that breaks the software down into model view controller is an implementation of MVC, it's an interpretation of MVC. But in the kind of most canonical interpretation, the controller is going to send commands to the model and it's going to send commands to the view. And it may, the controller may or may not listen to the model. So it may listen to the model, meaning that the, the model may notify the controller of stuff that's happening in it. And the controller will probably listen to the view. In fact, I suppose it will have to listen to the view really because otherwise how would it know what's going on? So the controller is listening to the view. The controller detects when things happen in the view and it does whatever it has to do. It does calculations and it then instructs the model what to do. So that's, that's basically MVC and we're gonna go ahead and look at how you could do this in the context of a swing application and as I say, I think there are different interpretations of this, and I've, I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen um, an interpretation, well, put it this way, I've, I've seen a variety of interpretations, and I've implemented applications myself, perhaps somehow wrongly, that I considered to be MVC, but they didn't necessarily follow this exact model. Nevertheless, because I want to give you quality information, and this seems to be the most standard interpretation, this is what I'm going to talk about in these tutorials. So that's it for this time. And next time we're going to get on to looking at a concrete realization of this. So join me again then. And until next time, happy coding.